The announcement in the March 13 issue of the discovery of a new transitional fossil is yet another blow against creationists. This pinniped, the Puigila Darwini, is a walrus-like carnivore that was able to walk on land, but also had some early adaptations to the water. Creationists don't see it as a transitional fossil, though. They see the most likely explanation as being that it was zapped into place by God. Creationists look at fossil interpretation, the way men think of driving and women think of French kissing. They all think they do it better than anyone else. <laughs> well, creationists, if you looked at the evidence, you would see that you're in the wrong lane and that's not my mouth. <laughs> the problem is that what scientists see as filling a gap in the fossil record, creationists see only as creating two more gaps, one on either side of the new fossil. So to show you how ludicrous this argument is, let's use a more common example. Season two, episode 18 of Star Trek Voyager, <laughs> which featured an appearance of one of the most capable, intelligent, charismatic officers Starfleet ever produced, Commander William Riker. <laughs> Do you think Commander Riker just appeared out of nowhere? Of course not. He had to come from somewhere because Captain Janeway knows all about him. <laughs> Scientists would look at this evidence and hypothesize there must be a skinnier and less bearded Commander Riker sometime in the past. We search and we find, yes, Star Trek The Next Generation. And of course, there must be a precursor to The Next Generation, given the evidence of its title, The Next Generation. <laughs> Let's get to the bottom of this. Computer. Working. <laughs> List guest actors appearing on The Next Generation and cross-reference with how awesome crossover episodes can be. Ah, Dr. McCoy, season one, episode one. Mr. Spock, season five, episode seven. Scotty, season six, episode four. All right, thank you, that's enough, computer. Uh, T, Earl Grey, hot. <laughs> I have a seat, counselor. <laughs> so, we have Scotty, Dr. McCoy, Mr. Spock. What can we discern from the presence of these ancient fossils? They are evidence of an even earlier iteration of Star Trek, a single phylogeny based on common traits. And when we eventually excavate deep into the IMDB stratigraphy, <laughs> we find Star Trek, Star Trek the Animated Series, Star Trek the Next Generation, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, Star Trek Voyager, Enterprise, and Star Trek motion pictures one through 10. Though there is some debate on whether Star Trek 10 was actually a motion picture or a fossilized pile of dung. And of course, <laughs> Star Trek 11, a truly fascinating discovery yet to be fully examined, but it's awesome. <laughs> So, in creating this lineage, we have not created two more gaps. We have verified a common ancestor, molded by the natural selection of its fan base and the environment of the network finances. And these days, we even know the mechanism that transfers traits from one generation to the next, the gene, Roddenberry. <laughs> and so, creationists, while you say the logic of science is fallible, you may think your phasers are set on stun, but they are actually set on stunningly inane. No one wants to take away your invisible friend. We just want to show you that at our tea party, we use real tea. Reserve God for the unknowable. Do not deny what we already know. There is no reason not to boldly go where we have already been. David Marino, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.